Well, hello, my friends. Today I'm going to talk to you about the extraordinary island of Sulawesi. Now, Indonesia is some 17,000 islands you might think are very similar. But the extraordinary thing is that there are an enormous amount of them which are incredibly different from each other culturally, geologically, historically, and especially in terms of flora and fauna. Perhaps few are more different from the others than Sulawesi. It is only the 11th largest island in the world, admittedly, but it is sandwiched between the second and third largest islands in the world, most of which Indonesia owns, that is Borneo and New Guinea. And although it's only the 11th largest island in the world, uh, it has by far the longest coastline of any of the Indonesian islands. And that is because it has a very ragged and unusual coastline. And it consists historically of land that has come off Guandana land in the south and off the Asiatic plate and off New Guinea and over the millennia has twisted around to create this extraordinary shape that has bits of many early continents on it and the DNA of many early types of animals on it as well. So some people have described Sulawesi as looking like a wind-blown orchid, others less charitably as like a ragged scorpion, for it has four long peninsulas and they're connected by a central body with high mountains, in fact as high as 11,500 feet. But this strange outline makes it easier to travel from one bit of Sulawesi to the other by boat than it is by land, because it is so spread out. And it also means that because you have these five long peninsulas and three great bays, the flora and fauna are madly separated as well and are extraordinarily different. For instance, the animals in Sulawesi are absolutely fascinating. You've got many creatures that are found nowhere else on the planet. So the Babi Rusa is a unique animal endemic to Sulawesi and it really means a pig deer, half pig and half deer. And sure enough, the top half of it is very much like a pig, except for these extraordinary tusks that not only come out of its lower jaw, but also out of its upper jaw. And they curve all the way around and sometimes go into its jaw and out of it again. So you have a circular tusk that is much in demand as an armband. But the lower half of this animal is very like a deer, with rather long legs and very deer-like feet. And there are biologists who say that its nearest relation is quite probably the hippopotamus that is found 6,000 miles further to the west in Africa. So the Babi Rusa is one of the strange and wonderful animals of Sulawesi. Another one would definitely be the Tarsia. And that is the world's smallest primate. It's about that big. The pygmy tarsier is about that big. And it has a big head with more cranial capacity to body weight than we humans have. So at some time in its past, it has evolved and developed a big brain that it has then forgotten and not bothered about. They're very strange and fascinating creatures. It was thought there were only three species, but in recent years we have discovered there are maybe 14 and still counting. And that's a primate. That is up there with the gorillas and the orangutans and the chimpanzees. The wonderful thing about Sulawesi is particularly its seas. Although it is quite close to Kalimantan or Borneo on the west hand side, it is divided from Borneo by a strait which is at least 11 to 12,000 feet deep. Everywhere around the island it is very deep water and in the shallows it is wonderfully clear and full of life. For instance, famously in 1938, for instance, famously, in 1938, off the Comoro Islands, off Africa, uh, people discovered and brought to the surface a fish called a coelacanth, which is 360 million years old. It is older than the first life forms to creep up on land, and it created great excitement at the time, and every museum around the world wanted a coelacanth. 
but then in just 2001, off Manado, northern Sulawesi, they found another subspecies of coelacanth, which is a beautiful rich blue with gold edging. That too is older than the dinosaurs. So this extraordinary fish, the coelacanth, which hasn't changed in 360 million years, gives you an idea of the great depths of Indonesia and the creatures that swim there may not have changed much over hundreds of millions of years. That's just one example. And of course, even in the shallows, we're constantly finding fascinating new things. Even a few years ago, within a decade, we discovered and described a species of octopus called the mimic octopus. Now this is an extraordinary animal, it isn't very big, with its spread arms it's about that big, but it can imitate, mimic, up to 15 different marine species so accurately that although humans have for 50 years have the, had the advantage of scuba diving equipment to go down and look them in the face and observe them, we did not know until a few years ago that it wasn't separate species but it was one animal, an octopus. It can turn itself, it see, when it encounters a predator it can immediately turn into what that predator least likes to eat. Uh, it is one of these great puzzles of Darwinian evolutionary theory. So S Sulawesi also, of course, was very influential in the thinking of the great 19th century naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace, who spent quite a lot of time there. And contemporaneously with Charles Darwin, came up with the theory of natural selection, partly inspired by the extraordinary diversity of wildlife that we found just in Sulawesi alone. There's another creature there. Uh, well, first of all, let's come on more to, well, I might mention another creature which is called the Maleo, which is a type of brush turkey, uh, a type of megapodus. It's about as big as a chicken, but it has long legs and big feet, and it either digs a hole and incubates its eggs in the hole with sunlight or it does something even more extraordinary. It lays its eggs in volcanic fumaroles. Uh, the very first explorers to arrive from the west to Sulawesi described seeing phoenix birds, which are birds that are normally mythological birds that are born from fire. Now it turns out that the Maleo lays its eggs in these fumaroles, so there it is with the uh, steam and smoke coming up around the eggs and when the animal hatches, it hatches straight out of its egg and it can fly straight away. So the first explorers saw these extraordinary birds hatching in fire and flame and flying off and they figured they were phoenix birds. Now what about the peoples of Sulawesi? There are 40 languages in Sulawesi alone and uh, uh, quite a few different ethnic groups, not all of them matching the language. Some ethnic groups speak several languages because they're so spread out. Uh, in the north, which is mainly volcanic, some wonderful, great rising active volcanoes there. People are more Christian, they're rather pale skinned. It is considered to be the only part of Indonesia that looks out to the rest of the world, as opposed to inwards. In the south, it is famous ethnically for the Bugis and the Makarsaris, but particularly the Bugis, who are a fine and ancient people who developed a relatively high civilization in early antiquity. So there are both seafaring boogies and sedentary land-based boogies. But the seafaring boogies are famous for having built these magnificent sailing prows that are, have made Indonesia famous all over the world. They are like a hundred foot up to two hundred feet long, tall, black-sailed, two-masted schooners sailing exclusively by the wind and uh, they were the vessels that followed the trading routes from one end of Indonesia to the other. But in history the Bugis have perhaps the longest literature of any other ethnic group anywhere in the world. La Galigo 
is like their Iliad and the Odyssey, only it's much longer. It is some 6,000 pages in which, uh, if all was collected together in a volume of contemporary books, it would take up about 30 volumes on a bookshelf. And it began over centuries of people simply telling stories until they were eventually written down in the 17th century. Southern half of, Ubud, of uh, Sulawesi is more Islamic and uh, they are particularly the seafarers down there who spread far and wide. For instance, we had a major politician in Malaysia not so long ago who was a Bugis and um, not only did they, they have their own written language and this extraordinarily long volume called La Galigo, but they have a pile of other fascinating attributes about them, not the least of which is having a language that all seamen have in every nation in the world, which is almost separate from their own language. It has a vast vocabulary related only to weather and to sailing boats. So my friends, you might consider, why do so few people go to Sulawesi on holiday? It is one of the most fascinating islands. It isn't as comfortable as Bali, it isn't as comfortable as Java, but it is full of everything an adventurer would ever like to see in the way of extraordinary animals, exotic peoples, beautiful mountains, fantastic sea. And it is a gem, one of the leading gems in the diadem of islands that make up Indonesia.